ladies and gentlemen, the first, first look. So, is someone getting a phone call? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're here, the first, first look with Dimitri Ninos. Thanks for joining us. I want to thank our sponsors, GI Sports, GoSports.com, and MyFanWagon.com. You're back. I'm back, baby. Your leg is good. Legs back. I'm fully assembled. Fully assembled. Tell me, how, what, how did you do that? And like, okay, first off, how did it go down? What happened to your knee? It was at Vegas, first event of 2016. Yeah, first NXL event. Show me, tell me what happened. Um, we're in a match against Dynasty, nitty gritty match. Um, Sunday, quarterfinals. Must win point. Um, it's a two on two, I want to say. Or it's a two on one, actually. Yeah. Me and Damien. I thought it was a one on one. Mm. Yeah. So I'm running down the field. And uh, Marcelo pops his head out of the Dorito, totally oblivious. I didn't know he was there. I make a quick inside move, and that's when it happened. It happened 10 steps before I even bunkered Marcelo. Yeah. Um, Did you feel it? Torched. Yeah. I felt like I was popping my knuckles, but in my knee. <laughs> so it's not a sensation you've never felt before. So I'm like, uh, all right, we're going to keep going. <laughs> and we keep going. And slowly but surely, it's like, don't go, don't go. And then that's when I bunker Marcelo. And you see in the video clip, you see me around the corner. Yeah. And my leg doesn't bend. It's just like yeah. a straight uh, ankle, or just a straight line. Yeah. And that's where people thought I tore it. And oh no, it happened, like I said, 10 that's steps like before. When it gave out. Yeah. That's when I was like, bro, you're done. And that's when I did the, the launch for the buzzer and, yeah. you know, that big moment of uh, wonder. Official diagnosis was ACL? ACL tear. LC. Oh my God. Yeah. Usually that takes years. You did it in. Some cra- I heard crazy yeah. stem cell. What? How did how did you recover so fast? Well, I did the surgery um, with a great doctor, and he was pretty adamant about rehabbing off the gate. So right out of surgery, he had me bend my knee all the way and walking around like literally my first uh, few moments conscious. So off the break, this dude was trying to get me to play paintball again or be active, and uh, so we did all the th- physical therapy for a couple months, and then. Uh, my mom knew a uh, doctor who dabbles in stem cell uh, therapy. The Ninios hookup. Yeah, the Ninios hookup. <laughs> and so, of course, we take advantage of that. Yeah. And, but who really knows how much that played a part? Yeah. You can't really measure it. But uh, hell, it made me feel better, you know, mentally. I was like, yeah, I got stem cell. I got the future in my knee. So, yeah, that's how that went down. And I came back four and a half months, pretty gnarly. Definitely not 100%, yeah. but enough to to play. What I was lacking was the strength of and speed. But you uh, still went to uh Dallas. Yeah. Coach Dallas, won Dallas with Infamous. Yes. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was a really awesome experience. Yeah. Um yeah, that was I think no matter who you are or what you're doing, if you get injured, you should still be a part of the team. You mm-hmm. know, if you want to retain your spot on the team and your importance to the team, mm-hmm. you should be there and be active. And so uh luckily it was in my own backyard, so it wasn't like you know, strenuous financially for the team to fly me out or anything. Right. But uh, no, it was a really cool look and it was cool to be, it sucked being sidelined, but it was cool to watch your boys and help them achieve what, you know, the goal is for that weekend. Let's talk about that a little bit. You decided to make the move to Ironman. Yeah. What, and you're wearing a dye shirt. Yeah. Explain what Explain. happened. Explain. Um, at the end, towards the end of the season, coming back, uh, you know, we, I came back for Cleveland, mm-hmm. and I played a lot in Cleveland because you know the spot I was playing was a back role, and the way the event turned out is mm-hmm. the back center was like one of the most important bunkers, and mm-hmm. so I was playing that spot well, and I played a lot, and it was perfect. And then leading into the following event, I started becoming more of a role player, and I really hate that. Mm-hmm. I really dislike it, but if I'll do whatever it takes for the team to win. Mm-hmm. And so I was moved into that position. And then at World Cup, the same thing happened. At practice, I was you know attacking and doing my thing. And then at the event, I was stuck doing these role-playing jobs, which is fine, but I felt like I could have been played in my position to help the team win. And you're a natural-born one, is yeah. what you're trying to say. Yeah, I, I think with my age and everything, Dude, like, let's put this guy in a position where other guys can't or be, you know, this guy can be efficient because he's so young and has the mm-hmm. youth to keep going. So don't put me in a role player position at this point in my career. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, I'll do anything for the team. But there was some conflict there. And I knew Travis was trying to get me more involved 
mm-hmm. but it just wasn't working out because we at the time we had a really deep roster mm-hmm. and there was a lot of question of you know how long I can do it with my injury but um with all that being said the practice schedule and stuff I wasn't really agreeing with it I didn't really like the way we're going about things mm-hmm. um Bobby left the team Brad leaves the team these are like two of my best friends you yeah. know and so once like you know two crucial members of that are your best friends leave a team nothing to nothing against anybody else on infamous but it's just like man you know those are my two best friends of course mm-hmm. there's damien callie cody Corey, all those guys mm-hmm. i love the, all of them but you know it just wasn't the same team for me and at this point in my life i really want to play a lot of paintball i don't mm-hmm. want to just play two weeks before an event um it's just not what my interest is and Ironman gave you that option. Yeah. Bobby Avilas, Todd Martinez, Scott Kemp, they all reached out to me pretty relentlessly. Yeah. Um, like, hey, man, come over here. This is what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to bring back the Ironman name. Dai's t- taking it w- super seriously. You know, they're trying to make this a World Cup or championship team again. And that's something I really want to be a part of. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell me a little about yeah. Todd. What's it like to be coached by the great Todd? <laughs> Todd's funny, man. Because... I've been friends with him for a long time, yeah. but once he becomes your coach, dude, it's yeah, it's, night and day difference. Yeah, the pits it, with Todd is just intense. Yeah, and in I, fact, when we do the webcast, it's like, all right, camera one, start box, camera two, you know, other start box, camera three, snake, camera four, Todd. Yeah, we need a close <laughs> up on him. No, and, and that's another huge part of the reason yeah. why I went over there was because of Todd, yeah. because that guy knows how to motivate and how how to bring the best out of his players, yeah. and that's what I'm trying to do, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so being coached by him, he's, yeah, he's incredibly intense. He doesn't play games. You know, when he's talking, everyone shut up and listen, and yeah. that's the way it's going to go. You want to talk, you want to have <clears throat> your input, yeah, when he's done talking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's, I respect that a lot. Because there's a lot of times you got, you know, all these professional players who are super outspoken, you know, all yelling at the same time, not getting anything accomplished. Let's talk about Ironman's new pickups. Not just you. Yes. Greg Sewers. Huge pickup, yeah. In my, my opinion, no. And totally. stats don't lie. Greg Sewers, twenty-one kills at World Cup, thirty-six points played, which is kind of low for Heat. Uh, Five eighty-three KP ratio, ranked overall twenty-fourth. But Greg Sewers, man, his his you know his repertoire, his resume doesn't uh, doesn't even be spoken. The guy's one of the best. Yeah. What's Did- that like playing with him? You know, I really like Greg. He uh, is a phenomenal player even better person you know he has like a very deep-rooted family background Mm -hmm. so you know he's a good good quality guy and that's you know who you want to play with and who you want to build your franchise around Mm -hmm. and so you know the Ironman acquiring him was a huge reason why I it piqued my interest because it's you know going to be a team full of good down-to-earth guys who Mm -hmm. can play phenomenal paintball yeah I mean it's interesting looking at the stats now for for the team you got Bobby sitting at first place Toke Jason Vitalich, Scott Kemp. These guys are all coming back? Not everybody. Who's, who didn't make it? Uh, Toke's not coming back. Mm. Vitalich isn't coming back. Mm. Um, so who do, you, who do you see? I mean, Shane Pistana, obviously, he's gone. He was yeah. sitting at uh, fifth on the team. So where do you see the top uh, starting five being for 2017 Ironman? Bobby Vilas, Greg Sewers, myself, Mike Paxson, Scott Kemp, and we're trying to find out that fifth spot right now. Yeah. You know, we, we just had the tryouts. So we're trying to, we literally dismantled the team of last year. Yeah. Um, Todd wanted to start over. Mm-hmm. Uh, black and white. Like, we're, <laughs> we're erasing everything. Yeah. You know? We're building a whole new team culture. So right now we're in the process of creating that culture of the team and figuring out who's going to solidify that starting five and who's just going to be on the team in general. Mm. Let's talk about your stats meter. Mm, mm, no. Mm. All right. Meter Ninos. Seven kills, 22 points played. Dude, what happened at World Cup? Um, I was in a role-playing position, and I definitely could have played better. Now, I will say that the position you played, Dorito side tower, correct? Yeah. Is, was the hardest spot to find kills on. Yeah. Because we had our stats guys on the snake side. And you were a back position, which it was hard to get confirmed kills. I'd say we were pretty accurate, but 
nonetheless, I mean, Infamous didn't do well. No. You know, tell me what happened. You know, what about that impact match? There was a lot on the line there. Yeah, so we put ourselves in a phenomenal position to win the series mm -hmm. and ultimately win World Cup mm -hmm. and take, you know, two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. It came down to the prelims, our last prelim game against Impact. I believe it was their last prelim game. Mm -hmm. And pretty much everything was on the line for them. You know, if they lose, they don't win the championship. We automatically win it there that day, that second. Mm -hmm. um, and they also get knocked out of the tournament, which is like, you know, beautiful for us because then there's really, you know, huge. Would have been yeah, we're not looking at anybody, you know, obviously there's good teams there. They're going to be on Sunday, but it's like, yo, our biggest rival is not going to be there. Like, let's, you know, let's go take this W. Right. Um, we, we didn't take the game seriously. We didn't take ourselves seriously. We didn't practice seriously to win that game because that's what the whole season rides on is opportunities built like that you know you gotta go snatch that opportunity yeah and uh we didn't um yeah and pff, that was it that was pretty much it man there's not much more to be said yeah it was seven one i want to say seven zero yeah yeah it was a terrible game fantastic game by impact because they their backs were on the wall and they're like yo this is ours mm -hmm. and that's where championship team that's the mentality you need. Mm -hmm. We weren't even on, like, we were, not only were we not in the same chapter, we weren't even in mm -hmm. the same book as them um, for that match. Mm -hmm. And that's unacceptable for a caliber team that Infamous is. Speaking of other teams, let's talk about it. 2017, as usual, off-season. Pandemonium. Hodge -podge, yeah, pandemonium. <laughs> uh, shit just goes down. I asked you before this podcast who are the top four teams to look at. Impact, X-Factor, Iron Man. Dynasty. Let's start with Impact. Dalton Vanderbilt is a new pickup. Yeah. Dave Baines retiring. How do you see that going down? Dave retiring, though I hate to see it. I hate to see anybody, any you know, any good player retire. Mm -hmm. But at the stage of the game that it is right now, there's just not layouts that complement his style. Mm -hmm. And it's just unfortunate for that. And then picking up Dalton, I think it's a great pickup. But I think it's a double-edged sword because now you have a team full of starters that can go anywhere, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are complaining because it weakens, you know, they're weakening the league, blah, blah, blah. Not really, man. They can only have five guys on the field at a time. <laughs> so let's say, you know, JC or someone's not playing great and Dalton's cold. They put Dalton out or vice versa, whatever the case may be. You know, we're not going to get the best quality of play from every one of those guys every single point. Mm -hmm. So I'm cool with it, man. You guys can go pick up whoever you want. It's, just, it's five guys, you know. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to keep those guys, you know, the bench off mm -hmm. the field for other teams, mm -hmm. sure, man. Like... <laughs> You know, no sweat off my back. <laughs> that makes sense. You basically softened all the other tier one teams, let's say. Yeah. And you, you ultra stacked. Impact. Yeah, you're sandbagging and your bench. But I mean, as a competitor, you see it as they're going to be the great. They're going to be one of the greatest regardless. Yeah, it's fine. That's fair. Yeah. X Factor. X Factor, they grabbed Clint Johnson and LJ. You played John. with Clint quite a bit. Yeah, I grew up with Clint. Uh, he's, he's really come into his own. He's a phenomenal player, phenomenal guy. Obviously, you won a championship, World Cup with uh, X Factor. Yeah. So yeah. A bunch how, do you, of, how do you see the, these pickups being good, positive? They're going to be a team? I think they're positive. And the way that X Factor is coming into this season, they're not bringing that many guys. You know, last year you saw them carry. Some guys that didn't play that much just because of their association with the team's history. And then they had the two new guys. Well, they got rid of the two new guys. And they're also not bringing all the extra people, you know, alumni, X-Factor guys, if you will. Right. Which is a great move, you know. It's just less chaos, less people, you know, asking for play time, blah, blah, blah. They're going to be a much more focused team, mm -hmm. which I think is great, uh, objectively. Mm -hmm. I'm a little worried because they're going to be a solid team now. You know, even, not that they're not already, mm -hmm. but... I mean, much more focused, dialed-in team. And I think LJ and Clint definitely complete what they got. They're lacking uh, wall presence, mm -hmm. obviously. They don't really like to go up there. So LJ's going to fill that void, and then Clint's going to be their aggressive one on either side, and they can really throw him anywhere. So, Well, you're looking at, I'm looking at their stats right now. The X-Factor squad played six people throughout World Cup. Yeah. Archie. Michael, Grayson, Billy, Colt, Kevin. Kevin Klum is off the team? Yeah, they lost Kevin. So Kevin Klum did the least amount of kills and points played. He had 12 kills, 28 points played, 4 to 9 KP ratio. Then going all the way up from there, almost everybody was like 4 to 6 KP. And then you have Kovar, who went off, 8 7 5, yeah. with 42 kills. Archie, 9 2 5, with 49 kills. He, he got second place overall. 
So you, how do you see their starting lineup being? It's basically gonna be Archie, Michael, Grayson, Billy, and then you got Colt. Yeah, they're gonna have to choose if they're gonna play Colt or Archie on the one on the Dorito side. Right. That's and gonna then, be a game time decision. But they're gonna have to put LJ in a good amount to play right. the wall to contest that. Who was playing the wall for X Factor? It was basically basically Grayson. Grayson. You saw variations of yeah. Grayson Dixon. It, I don't know if Colt got up there that much this so year. So you sit Grayson. I mean Grayson twenty eight forty five sixty five KP ratio. That's still yeah it's still it, top fifteen. It's definitely gonna come down to the the layout. You know, yeah. it's yeah it's that that's a good question. That's going to be very difficult to balance that out because yeah. you can't sit Grayson. Yeah, and Clint? You put Clint over Billy? Nah, I think they're going to stick with Billy. And Clint is a warm-up season. Yeah. they're going. To, it's going to be hard for Clint, not because of the quality player he is. He's phenomenal. It's mm-hmm. just, dude, it's hard to find space on a team that's established. You know, yeah. that's, a, that's the biggest struggle. It doesn't matter who they had. They could pick up anybody, and yeah. it's going to be difficult for that guy to get play time because Ryan Brand isn't going to change – the way the team is going to play or you know the roster on the field yeah if it's not extremely warranted you know Mm -hmm. uh billy's been through the ringer with x factor and he's proven his worth time and time again you know about getting to a spot and being consistent i've so next team dynasty dynasty losing dalton losing dalton i think they're going to be stronger with less players. With less players. Because now you get these qu- extreme high-level players in the mix. Um, I know Tyler's going to be their one on the Dorito side, which is going to be an interesting play. Did Would, anyone retire officially? No, nah, no one's retiring this year uh, for Dynasty. Yosh, but, uh, everyone's staying. Everyone's staying. They're just losing Dalton. Losing Dalton. So A-Rod, Ryan Greenspan, Oliver Lang, Marcelo, Blake Yarber, Brandon Short. I believe Oliver is iffy. We don't know... No one knows what Here the again. what With the word the, is. <laughs> the Oliver train. Uh, Dalton's gone. Ironically, Dalton played the least amount of points, least amount of kills. Uh, right next to Tyler Harmon, seven kills, sixteen points play, four three eight. Yeah. So losing Dalton isn't going to be devastating to their team, is what you're saying? No, not it's at all. Gonna be I think I mean Dalton's phenomenal, but like you said, the stats for World Cup, he wasn't their go-to guy, mm-hmm. you know, and I think. He is a go-to guy. Mm-hmm. So I think his move to impact is good for him. And I think it's good for Dynasty's overall mm-hmm. uh, vibe they're going for. Like I said, Tyler's going to be emerging as a one again, which is what we need. Tyler, or what Dynasty needs. Tyler needs to be in the mix and, you know, getting kills and using his energy to fucking get down the field, mm-hmm. you know. You don't want to put him in a role-playing position. That's Dynasty's biggest issue is they – they've never been short of quality players. Hmm. What they've been short of is making those quality players play to the best of their ability. Hmm. You know, the guys who are shine that shine the most, they're all creatives and artists out there. So you don't want to put an artist in like a, you know, desk job. That guy's not going to get any production done. Right. So don't put him in a tower shooting across the field shooting 12 pots. It's mm-hmm. silly. Get Tyler in the mix. Uh, Marcelo has an injury. His knee uh, he tore his meniscus and has a partially torn LCL. So mm-hmm. we're going to see him fill the void of a role-playing position, which mm-hmm. sucks, but maybe that's what they need to get the rest of these guys some uh That some one was weird, too. Did Marcelo get injured at the event? No, he got injured. I'm not sure office. exactly what happened to Marcelo. All I know is, you know, this year, you see it on his Instagram. I've talked to him a little bit about it. He's going to be uh, sustaining his injury this year. He's not going to get surgery right off the bat. He's going to play the season through, tough it out, mm. and then go get it repaired in the off season to come. Got it. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting one. Last but not least, chin straps. Chin straps. <laughs> I think the chin strap rule is a, a well enforced rule. You know, of course it is. It, any, any additional safety is good. Yeah, realistically, it always should have been like that. Yeah, Do but I, go ahead. Do I uh, dislike the way it looks? Of course, dude. You're talking to one of the most aesthetically like interested guys. You know, <laughs> like I hate dumb looking things and I hate bad designs. I think the chin straps now look terrible. I think the league should focus on making them look cool, look sweet. You know, that'd be that's my input. Um, but everybody freaking out. You know, dude. I <laughs> wait till your mask falls off. Let's see what happens. I was yeah. on a team where it happened. And, dude, that was the most traumatizing thing that's ever happened to that guy. Yeah. You know, that's that's not sweet. Mm-hmm. You're doing something you love and you lose your vision. Like, dude, the whole reason we play paintball is 
to not uh, die or mm-hmm. get really injured. Yeah. Why would you complain about a chin strap? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's too much complaints, and the ones that are complaining are pretty low IQ to begin with. So. Yeah, I agreed. Um, 2017, man. What's your goal? Let's wrap it up with that. What, what's the plan for, for Ironman? We're coming in to win tournaments. Um, we're really trying to skip this rebuild thing. That's why Die uh, and Todd got the players that he got. You mm-hmm. know, so we're trying to really just be a top four team. That's the uh, that's the goal. We're taking it seriously. We're practicing like a top four team should. Mm-hmm. We're doing all the due diligence to put the work in. Um, but right now, it's really about creating the culture of the team. So you know, in the weeks to come, that's the goal. And then when we get to Vegas, it's, you know, same cliche, win one point at a time, one match at a time, and then see where the dust falls. But yeah. Where do you think we're going to see you on the field? Uh, I'm going to be the snake guy, number one snake guy. Back, right? back from where it all began. Yeah, going back to the roots, which I couldn't be more pumped for, you know. Yeah. Um, it's going to be really exciting. <laughs> Mira Ninos, thank you for being here. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. First episode of First Look. We will catch you guys soon. Bye.